Well, welcome to the show, Guy. Thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate you being on here. And uh, Guy, if you don't mind giving us a little bit of a backstory of who you are and your company and what is it that you do. Great. Thanks, Anya. Great to be here. Um, my name is Guy Bauer. I'm the founder and creative director of Umalt, a B2B video marketing agency. And I got here through, I was a uh, video nerd since the seventh grade. I've always loved making videos. Um, I never really considered myself a marketer um, and just kind of made videos to entertain people. And around 2010, uh, the recession forced me into business. And it turned out that my knack for entertainment kind of cross paths with the need to market myself. And I kind of learned how to market that way. And, and I feel like our videos have grown in popularity because they take an entertainment um, first approach rather than a just shove a marketing message. Approach. Yes. I think it's so, so important. So, and that's something I was going to say, um, you know, I think way back in the day when, video was just starting to become popular, it was like, oh, video, let me watch that. So it was pretty much like, if it's video, I'd watch it. But now I feel like it's, everything is video. So it's almost like, uh, like, you know, I'm going to be very selective about what I watch. So it's almost like, yeah, you got to be, you got to be very, very strategic um, and be able to catch people's attention right away. Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's going to blend in with everything else because video has become so popular. So speaking of video becoming so popular, um, Guy, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, why video is so popular, what's working on video and, uh, you know, as far as the companies using video, what kind of success are they seeing? Yeah, so you're exactly right. 10 years ago, just the fact that you had a video was different enough to stand out. So you won by default. Well, now it's 10 years later and video is ubiquitous. So um, yeah, we used to, us video marketers used to go to market with the idea that video is engaging, just any video, just make one, it's engaging. And now the rules have changed. And now more and more, like you said, people are more uh, discriminating in terms of, you know, valuing their time and, and not just watching every video. So I was actually just writing a blog about this today, it's about um, the way to make great videos and the, the way to make uh, the most effective content. What we've seen make uh, the best stuff is, is the assumption that you have to earn people's attention. No one is going to just sit through a three-minute video anymore uh, by default. They're not going to give you 100% of their attention. The best content we see um, assumes people's disinterest at the start and then strives to earn their attention through delivering value. And the way you deliver value is through entertaining someone. And then your marketing message comes along for the ride to help them solve a problem. So it's almost a relative to your audience, they're winning twice. They're winning once on just they received entertainment through your content. And then the second time is they win by being educated on something that could uh, positively impact their life. And we've seen all the best work that we do and our clients' most successful stuff where they have the greatest impact. It always takes an entertainment first approach, um, assuming the audience is disinterested and then earning their interest. Mm -hmm. This really makes me think of, uh, you know, the day after uh, Super Bowl yep. um, and everyone's talk. Obviously, people are talking about who won Super Bowl, but we're also talking about the commercials on TV. And obviously, that's exactly what they're doing, right? It's like who up who and what's the commercial that people are talking about. Um, so it is becoming um, more of a um, involved production and involved strategy to figure out like, okay, what's going to get somebody's attention. It's not just like you said, it's not good enough just to put a video out there for sake of putting video out there. Now you really have to be 
uh, smart about what's going to work and what's not going to work. Um, so before we get into some of the ideas for home builders, as far as what types of videos they can produce, can we talk a little bit about that entertainment value? Like from your experience, what have you seen that works really well? I'm sure you've done a gazillion of different videos and um, I'm sure sometimes you're probably surprised to see that one works versus the other where you thought maybe some, you know, some other video is going to perform better. Um, so is there kind of a common patterns or common formula or common theme that these best performing videos have that you can share with us that maybe we can try to imitate? So it's currently under development. And if I ever find the formula, I'll be a billionaire. Um, so there is, yeah, that's the short answer is there is no formula, but what I've seen is a pattern and uh, I, I say this is beautiful, funny, make me cry, pick one. You have to be in one of those buckets. What I found is humans are very simple creatures. Um, you know, we live in houses and we're on podcasts and we use big words and we're taught, you know, we're all smart and stuff and drive Teslas. But on the scale of the universe, um, we just started living in houses like a millisecond ago when you like, you know, think of the in universe time, meaning humans are very simple animals. We're very simple creatures. Don't overthink it. We like things that are beautiful. We like things that are funny. And then we like to be made to cry or, or like express some kind of emotion that, wow, like, you know, that's so sad, or I'm so happy, because we all know that we're going to die soon. So it's beautiful, <laughs> funny, make me cry. You're, again, that's not inclusive of every great idea. But what I found is, is that most great things fit in one of those three buckets, because it's just what humans like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's talk about some ideas for home builders, because obviously, um, if, if you're advertising on social media or if you're doing any kind of advertising, you know, besides showing beautiful pictures of your homes, you'd probably want to incorporate some video other than a video tour of your model home, which could be a great video for sure, especially these days with um, the rise of TikTok and Instagram Reels. I'm seeing more and more home builders jumping on this trend. And again, I think that goes to show that videos here to stay. And I think reels just today, I saw that they're um, rolling out 60 second reels now. Mm. Um, and obviously, you know, when you go in your reels, it's like, okay, scroll, scroll, scroll. So again, you have a very, very tight schedule to try to catch somebody's attention in that. Um, so when home builders are thinking about creating videos for um, their customers, so whether it's you know to um, build brand awareness or try to um, try to get some leads, um, what types of videos do you recommend um, that someone um, use in in that strategy? Um, it's going to be different for every single company who's listening to this, but here's how I would go about it. Get your sales team in a room and ask the question, where do sales fizzle out or where do you see homeowners like they can't, where is the point in the process where they can't connect dots or where you're spending a disordinate amount of time educating, like where it, it where the sales process kind of like gets like hits a very rough sandpaper patch right where there's tons of friction and i would start working backwards from there in terms of let's educate the people who are already in our funnel if you can up your conversion rate on people who are all who have already raised their hands as leads that's going to be your fastest path to um you know sales and, and revenue and then i would go backwards and, and well how do you how do you do the top of funnel stuff how do you get eyeballs and new attention what I would do is, is start watching your competitors and what you're going to start noticing is the patterns that everyone is doing. And I would write them down on the paper, like so-and-so does this, so-and-so does this. And what you'll notice is they're all copying each other. Then what you do is you just do the George Costanza 
you do the exact opposite of everyone else. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and you stick, and, and then, well, how do you know what to do, right? It's, you have to get to your fundamental truth of what makes your brand truly different. And what you're gonna notice is all the things that you're, you have in your head that you think is so different about you, you're gonna notice all your competition are mostly saying the same thing. And so it's gonna force you to really go deeper, deeper. It can't just be like, you know, we build homes. Like it can't be that, it, it can't be that like superficial. It has to be like deeper, deeper, deeper of what you are truly bringing to the table. I call it the Howard Stern rule. The reason why Howard Stern is so big is he says what is on everyone else's mind who, and they don't have the guts to say it, but he will say it. It's what is the Howard's, how can, if Howard Stern were in your company, what would he say about you guys, right? Well, obviously it may not be that great, but what would he say good about you? And, and find that. And then that's how you go to market, whether it's through TikTok, whether it's through engaging uh, with a company like us, who's make like really polished stuff. Um, you go to market with that special thing that is that is you. Mm -hmm. So, and um, speaking of um, targeting people who are already in your funnel, and you mentioned really trying to figure out where people get stuck in the sales process, like that makes me want to laugh because home building process is so complicated that you should have no, <laughs> no difficulties finding where people get stuck because it's every single place they can get stuck in the home building <laughs> process. So there's lots and lots of material, but I would say, yeah, the easiest thing is like, uh, like you said, uh, pull your sales team together and see what's the top Q and A that they're getting from their walking prospects, or maybe it's mm -hmm. when they're chatting with somebody over Zoom. What are those questions that people are constantly asking you? So, and you can you can address those um, through through video. So you mentioned whether you do a TikTok video or you do um, more of a polished production. So can we talk about? Um, you know, way, when is it appropriate to do the, the TikToks and more polished stuff? And do you think, you know, there is a, like how public perceives that? Um, obviously, you know, my guess would be that more polished stuff is going to be going on your website as opposed to TikTok stuff is going to stay on so your social media where it belongs, but do we put the uh, more polished stuff out there on social media? Um, and really how would a home builder know that, hey, should I spend my time making this TikTok video since you know it's free um, and there's lots of ideas that you can, that I can do, but is it really gonna help my brand or do I trust a professional like yourself to really help me make this polished video. So how do I decide which way I go? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, obviously the advantage of TikTok is that it's free to do. It just takes time and it actually does take time. So it's not as easy as like, yeah, just make a TikTok. You, you, when you look at TikTok, I mean, people spend a lot of time editing them and polishing them. The cool, so with TikTok to me, I think it's a, is there someone on your team who has time to do it? And are they entertaining enough to, uh, to support it? Um, in terms of how to decide like what kind of video to make, I mean, um, if they engage with an agency like ourselves, we, that's what we do is we help triage. But the formula you said is exactly right. The more evergreen you need something, the the kind of brand asset that you're going to have for years, you want to spend money on. And then the TikTok stuff evaporates in 48 hours. You know what I mean? Like uh, it, it doesn't last a long time. The other thing is um, I like to try lots of different channels. So you may find that your audience just isn't on TikTok, but they're really on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's kind of the same content. So you can make content for one and like put it over different channels and see what works. Um, but I think the general rule of thumb is, is um, think of your funnel, like awareness, consideration, decision. That's also how you want to spend your money. So awareness, spend a lot of money, consideration, a little less, and then decision in, in terms of production, 
uh, don't spend a lot of time. That's more of the stuff that your own people can make through um, through um, like online video platforms where they can record stuff themselves. Mm -hmm. So before we uh, hit the record button, we were talking a little bit about one of your uh, clients and uh, they're specifically in the building material uh, industry. And so um, you brought up an interesting point that, you know, there's so much to know about building material, but for an average Joe building a home, um, they really have no idea. And like, they may have certain perceptions about something. Like today I was reading through a client's um, Facebook feed uh, and somebody said like, oh, why does the house, the house cost 600 grand where it's just, you know, planks and vinyl. And it's just like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, I had to really restrain myself from like firing back at them, um, how un uneducated they are and clearly have no idea what building materials cost these days. Um, because as you know, a lot of builders right now building homes for practice. Um, so um, it is a great uh, avenue to explore um, to really help differentiate your brand from the guy down the street, especially if you have um, maybe a higher end brand and you are using products like Hardy um, and uh, maybe um, you know you're 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 building homes that are superior to a, a standard production home. And so when the customers come in and they're asking you, well, why is your house priced so much higher than the competitor's home? Those are all the things that you can really um, take individually and address them on social media. Um, so can we talk a little bit about that to give to give them some ideas of what that could look like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, so if, and actually I'll reframe it by just something that none of us have expertise in, or at least I don't think you do is, is wine, right? So when you go to- a, Hey, I drink it every day. <laughs> you <laughs> drink you it, right? But-, I'm but <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding. I do drink <laughs> wine every day, but <laughs> I don't have expertise in it. <laughs> right. So you're an avid wine drinker. You're an average, an avid uh, consumer of wine. And yet, if I were to put a unlabeled $90 bottle of wine and an unlabeled $5 bottle of wine, the odds of you being able to tell me what kind of wine and how much it costs are basically zero, right? So but yet to a wine person like who's in the industry, I'm sure they're, they're, they would like spit out the $5 bottle of wine and be like, oh, isn't it obvious? And that's, that's because they have the curse of knowledge. So the wine connoisseur, they, uh, they know everything. Same thing with you, the builder or the contractor. You have a ton of knowledge. You have the curse of knowledge. So, um, be, so because you know that product X is so much better than product Y, you assume that so does everybody else. But your customers don't. It's like two glasses of wine to them. They're like, I don't know. And when the mind, when they can't make the, um, when they can't make that leap of like, yeah, obviously this is better, they're just going to go to price. And that's why there's so many, that's why, I mean, as a creator myself too, I hate when people pick the cheaper way of doing something. You always want to work with the best materials. It does lead to a better product. Um, so that's an area where you have to break down, like, where do we have a ton of knowledge that our customers don't? And that's where video can come in and explain to them why this building material is better than this one. Um, or at least uh, maybe it's not about which one is better than the other one, but it's about education of like this one pros and cons, this one pros and cons. And now once you educate your client, now they can make a decision based on risk reward. And that's where I know a lot of the premium building products, they lay in the value in terms of the long-term payoff that you're not going to be maintaining as much and yada, yada, they pay off. It takes a longer time for them to, for that ROI. But if you can explain that in a short thing, right, that's the thing is um, 
we bought Windows uh, last year and we received a 20 page proposal about why one window was better than the other, but I don't have time to like read that. And I kind of don't care enough. So I just made my choice based on which number looked the best. Um, so, and you don't want your customers choosing like that because guess what? It's your reputation down the line when the cheap thing fails or starts to fade or whatever cracks, they're going to not blame the product. They're going to blame you. And so that's why it's a, it's a long-term reputation thing. Um, and that's where video can really help you. It's not just about sales. It's about education. Yeah. And uh, I think um, where you can use that product video is in two places. You can certainly use product video in that beginning stage when you're trying to acquire customers as brand awareness, like what makes our homes different from the guy down the street. But then also as a follow-up, as you're nurturing those clients, you can once again use those same videos because again, it reminds them, hey, this is why you should look at us as opposed to our competitors because you know they are shopping multiple, multiple um, uh, builders. And that's a great reason to follow up. And sometimes we're like, oh my God, what do I follow up with? You know, it's, Hey, are you ready to buy the house yet? <laughs> you know, so, um, but if you send them that video, um, whether it's over email or if you can even send it to them over a smartphone and it talks about, hey, we use, you know, the cement siding um, for all of our homes. And this is how it's going to perform better than a standard vinyl siding over time. And this is how it's going to weather better than this, than the standard siding. And, you know, you don't have to worry about replacing it. And this compared to stucco and other materials and whatnot, there's, I mean, you can go on and on and on. I remember uh, when I worked for a big national builder, one of the things we used was this stuff called MS Delta, which was like the way they waterproofed the basements. And we were one of the few builders in the area who would actually finish basements because we used that material. So that meant we didn't have to come back for warranty calls so much because we knew it was going to work where other builders didn't have that same material and obviously they didn't want to finish the basement because it cost a lot of money to fix the problem when the basement floods yeah. um so that just you know it's a perfect example of how you can talk about what's different about your company versus the other company and really how because i remember sitting in a model home and you know if somebody comes in and they they i mean one it's kind of you know you can't pivot the conversation to um, to that. And, and plus, no matter how great I'm going to try to explain it, I'm probably not going to do as well of a job as like an entertaining video with visuals that really show how the basement comes together. Um, so there's really, really a lot of opportunities in that area. I love the idea of um, showing the products that you use in your home. And obviously, there's not going to be a shortage of material there, there to think of. Um, now, you mentioned that um, it's either going to be beautiful, funny, or make me cry. So when it comes to product videos like that, how do we know which way to go? How do we, you know? Well, it all depends on your brand. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's the thing is, so these videos that you make, right? There's, there's two benefits. There's a, the overt benefit is that the customer gets educated and then potentially now their appetite for better materials and maybe more profitable stuff goes up. The other thing is that the medium is the message, the subtext when you're sending these education and you constantly have this, um, like this archive of content that is anticipating all their questions and answering them before they ask them. The medium is the message. The subtext that is, is being transmitted is that um, we're a brand that you can trust. And we've done this a ton of times. We've done this so much that we've pre-baked this video for you without you even asking this question. That shows like competence, right? That we can recognize patterns and all that stuff. So that's the subtext. In terms of beautiful, funny, make me cry, it's that's the delivery mechanism. That's the that's the wrapper that the content is wrapped in, um, and 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 I really do. And th this is where a lot of folks struggle: is they go, well, none of those work for us because this is a thing about 
you know, like uh, like granite countertops or something. But that's the big mistake there is, yes, it is about granite countertops, but you're forgetting it's a branding and marketing opportunity. So if you can actually make an emotional thing about granite countertops, um, you will now get a brand impression that is so valuable at such a low stage in the funnel. That's like worth tens of thousands of dollars in, in external marketing. So, and this is possible. One of our clients, I guess I could say James Hardy, um, you know, one of the best compliments they they paid me was uh, they said this video made me cry. And then I realized it was a video about siding. So <laughs> it's like, it's totally possible. It depends on what your brand is and who you are. And that's where I said, you have to get to the Howard Stern essence. It can't be the superficial stuff of like, you know, that everyone else says. And how do you know what everyone else is saying? Because you're doing your research, you're looking on TikTok, they're on their YouTubes, um, on their YouTubes. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, on their sure, YouTube channels. that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's how, but I really would pick a delivery mechanism in one of those three buckets. Don't be boring. It's a wasted opportunity. So even if you're making a video about um, who we are as a builder, and I've seen quite a few videos that are like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. like, how many different angles can we do? How many cuts can we do? Because it's so boring. Yep. Um, so think about something entertaining. Um, and yeah, I can think of um, one of my clients that I was working with and they, they did a video and um, the, the two of them were like, kind of like friendly bickering back and forth. And like at the end, that's the stuff that made the cut because it showed their personality, yeah. you know, and, and that was the stuff that they were like horrified <laughs> to show or that's why the bloopers work so well, right? Like, mm -hmm. because it is entertaining and it shows the, the personality of the builder. Um, you know, people want to do business with people that they like, right? And Period. what better way to show than a blooper video? Um, so when I'm thinking, okay, like I'm, you know, sold on the whole video idea. I know that if I'm going to invest my money, it's obviously really, really important to make sure that the video actually um, is catchy. So, so that I'm not just making a pain bunch of money and then it's wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Um, so if I'm a builder and I want to do that, are you the one coming up with the idea to make it funny? Like, how do I make it funny? Like I, you know, I'm just a builder. I'm, yeah. I build homes. And this is where, this is the biggest pitfall. It doesn't matter if you're B2B, B2C builder, tech fortune 500 company. This is the number one mistake everyone does. Is they go, all right, we need a video. Okay. Let's uh, call someone who makes videos. And what they're, the big mistake is, is that, Yes, to make a video, you need to pull the camera and press record and then edit that video. But that is actually not where all the value is made. Where the value is made in the actual video is in the creative process, in the thinking, the writing and the uh, pre-visualization, the art direction. Um, and, and that's where you have to understand that making a great ad whether it's whatever, wherever you're using it in your funnel um, is a two-step process. Step one, come up with an idea and write it. And step two, make it. In the builder terms, it's to make a custom house. Step one, you need architectural blueprints. And step two, you build it. You don't just go building a house without a plan, right? That doesn't make sense. So it's the same thing. A lot of people they go direct to just start framing something. And then, and then once the frames are up, they're like, wait, this looks weird. And none of these floors match up, right? Of course it wouldn't because you're just winging it. You need the blueprints. And that's where um, uh, you don't want to be doing that yourself. Uh, you want to engage a creative agency, like an agency like ours, or you know, just Google creative agency and your city. Um, but the main thing you want to buy is the idea. I'd rather you save money by buying an idea and then making it on your iPhone than writing the idea yourself and spending a bunch of money to have it made professionally. 
Um, it's way better to have a, you know, if you had to pick one, a great idea poorly made than a poor idea amazingly made. So mm -hmm. step one, focus on the idea, bring in the tools you need, whether it's through an agency or you can find like a freelance copywriter, freelance art director, but focus on the ideas first and the execution second. Great, great, uh, great points here. So, uh, Guy, if somebody is like, okay, well, that sounds good. I do want to work with your agency like you. Where do you guys are located? And uh, if somebody wanted to actually work with you. Yeah, so we work with clients all over internationally. Uh, uh, we're at uh, umalt.com, U-M-A-U-L-T.com. And we actually have a landing page set up uh, for your listeners, umalt.com slash Anya. We've got a download, uh, seven ways to avoid making a corporate video. So I highly recommend you download that. And we've got links to our podcast and a bunch of other goodies for you. Oh, awesome. What's the name of your podcast? Death to the Corporate Video. <laughs> love it love it all right awesome um and guy where do you hang out on social media mostly if somebody wanted to connect with you uh, mostly on linkedin actually i think it's uh at guy bauer and uh also instagram uh at guy bauer that's the advantage of my name i guess it's i, I was able to <laughs> all the other guy bowers are screwed i've got all the main <laughs> names <laughs> nice nice yeah because uh because your name is fairly common name so um that's that's a good work on your part um awesome well thank you so much for being on the show today i really appreciate you taking the time to share this information with us i absolutely love the idea of um materials video um again i think most of the builders um, when they think about video, they think that bio video, or we think video testimonials, which is obviously great, uh, but the materials video is something that is highly, highly um, educational. And if you think about like customers, do they really care about your bio video versus materials video? You know, I'd say the materials video probably. Um, the testimonials, yeah, there could be some good ones, but I almost prefer, um, you know, the raw um, testimonials because I think when they're polished testimonials, it's, mm, I don't know if I really buy it, you know, and it's like maybe, yeah, you found one or two customers that really love you, but what about the rest? <laughs> I'd yeah. rather go on Yelp or uh, somewhere else to read the Google reviews than to watch um, a ton of uh, polished testimonials. So hope you guys got some great ideas from today's episode. And guys, thanks so much for being on, um, sharing that information with us today and hope to see you soon. My pleasure, Anya. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye. Take care.